I'm Rob Jones, and welcome to Tech Talk on Loop TV. This edition, we're continuing looking at Propellerhead's latest software application, Record. Last time, we looked at recording and editing, showing how to set up a comped audio clip and some simple backing tracks. This time, we're taking a more detailed look at the SSL mixer, seeing how effects are added and various processing and routing is done. Let's check it out. Pressing the F5 key sets the mixer to full screen, and then you can scroll up and down the mixer or jump to certain sections using the convenient slider on the right side. Just below this are a series of switches, which turn the various channel strip sections displays on and off. These are useful if you're only using one or two of the sections predominantly, like say the sliders and other main mixer controls, and maybe the EQ sections, and want to simplify things a bit. So let's have a look at some of the sections on offer then. We'll start with the EQ. The EQ section has four bands that each deal with a different part of the spectrum, from bass up to the top end. First at the top though, you've got your filters, which are used to remove the highest and lowest frequencies. This is useful if wanting to get rid of low frequency issues like rumble or proximity effect if recording with a microphone. To do this, you just turn on the high pass with the on switch and then use the dial to roll off as much of the bottom end as you want. Guys, can't believe the time. I've slept away most of the day, it's way beyond half nine. My head's a mess. Below this, there are the four bands. The top and bottom deal with the highest and lowest frequencies, and these are shelves, which cut or boost large portions of the spectrum, so it can be used to increase or attenuate the overall bass and treble. You can switch these to smaller bands using the bell switch, which means you then affect a smaller amount of frequencies, centred around the value set here. In the default shelf mode, the frequency dial sets the start of the shelf, so the lower the value for the high frequency band, the more of the top end it affects, and vice versa for the low frequency band. The two central bands adjust the middle frequencies, one the upper middle and one the lower. These are both parametric bands, which means you can adjust the gain, the frequency and the width of both bands. So for example, I can set the upper band to 1K, which is a frequency the ears are very sensitive to, and make the band wide, and then use the gain dial to give the track more presence, whilst making sure it doesn't become too honky. Reducing the gain consequently makes the guitar stand out less. First I have to turn the EQ section on though. If I want to target a smaller band of frequencies, which makes the EQ effect more colourful, I can narrow the band using the Q dial here. One interesting control in the EQ section is the Filters to Dynamic Sidechain switch here. This means that you can use the filters to EQ the signal sent to the dynamic section, rather than the main signal on the track itself. This is useful if you want to remove or lessen certain frequencies without affecting others. A common usage for this, for example, is de-essing, when a vocal is too sibilant and you need to improve the top end. My vocal is OK. But to demonstrate this, I can make it too sibilant using the EQ section to show you how it's done. First then, let's set an appropriate section of the arrangement so that lots of S sound is heard. Confess it's a head's a mess, I must confess it's a head's Then we can turn on the EQ section and turn up the gain on a small band of frequencies around 7 kHz so that the sibilance is too much. A mess, I must confess it's a head's a mess, I must confess it's a head's a mess, I must confess it's a Now, if we turn on the high pass filter, then you can remove the lowest parts of the signal so that only the sibilant part is heard. I must confess it's a head's a mess, I must confess it's a head's a mess, I But this is affecting the main output of the track. So if we activate the filters to dynamic sidechain switch, then that filtered signal is just sent to our dynamics section and not the track output itself. I must confess it's a head's a mess, I must confess it's a head's a mess, I must confess it's a Next thing to do is to change the signal path on the track. This is shown by a diagram in the input section of the mixer. Notice that the filters are shown as routing to the dynamics section, now we've set them up that way. As default, the signal flow is dynamics, then EQ as compression can reduce or squash the effect of the EQ. However, in this case, we want the sibilant EQ'd signal to go into the compressor so it can be de-essed. 
So let's click on the Dynamics Post EQ switch, which swaps the order of those two sections round. Now if we turn on the compressor and set up some heavy settings, with a low threshold and high ratio, and a fast response, increasing the attack time with the fast switch, and shortening the release time, which will make the compressor only act briefly but heavily on the sibilant bits, then you can hear how the problem is removed. Watch the gain reduction meter as the signal compresses, so you can see that the compressor is only acting on the sss sounds. Heads a mess, I must confess it. So 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 heads. So you can see how each channel strip has a flexible signal path with various routing options. Let's have a look at the different effects now, and the difference between insert effects and send effects. Basically, with an insert effect, you normally have less control over the amount of the effect, because it processes a mixer track's main output directly. A send effect, on the other hand, takes a duplicate of the signal on the track, and then processes it separately in parallel, and you can then blend an amount of that signal back in with the main dry signal. Compression, EQ, and effects that modulate a signal's amplitude or frequency are normally insert effects, whereas send effects are generally things like reverb and delay. Each mixer track has an insert FX section that allows you to load presets for particular applications. This is a godsend if you want to carry out complex processes like the de-essing I just demonstrated, but find that method a bit daunting. If I undo everything on the track apart from the EQing, so the track's still sibilant, then I'll show you how easy it is. All you do now is click on the Browse switch, then choose de in the Vocal folder, inside Dynamics in your Effects patches. Now you can hear that you don't even need to tweak anything and the problem goes away. Heads a mess, I must confess it. So heads a mess, I must confess it. So heads a mess, I must confess it. So heads a The DAWs allow you to tweak the main parameters of the insert effects though, like compressor threshold here. So you can change the amount of compression that's occurring, for example, if too much of the top end is being removed. Heads a mess, I must confess it. So heads a mess, I must confess it. So heads a mess, I must confess it. So heads a mess, I must. To see the insert effects and how these dials and buttons are connected to them, you can switch over to the rack, and then click on the Show Insert Effects and Show Programmer switches on the Vocal Audio Track section. So you can see that we've got the same processes going on as we had on the track when I DS'd it. Flipping the rack round shows you the way things are wired up. Firstly, you can see on the vocal track's main connector strip here, you've got the insert effects all connected in a loop, which begins at the insert outputs and ends at the inputs. So the signal is first going into a splitter, which then goes into the compressor and the EQ. The EQ is then singling out the sibilant frequencies, as we did with the filters before. And that signal is then going into another splitter, which then sends that signal into the compressor's sidechain input and a submixer at the top here. The submixer is just allowing us to easily monitor the EQ'd signal going to the sidechain to make sure it's set to the correct sibilant part. So you've got the output from the compressor on the first subchannel and the output of the EQ on the second. On the programmer here are the insert FX switches on our track and the last one is set to solo the sidechain, which just has the effect of switching over the mute switches here, so that we hear the output of the EQ rather than the output of the compressor. Heads a mess, I must confess it. So heads a mess, I must confess it. So heads a mess, I must confess it. So heads a mess, I must... If you want to change the setup of the dials and switches in the insert FX section, then you can use the programmer here. For example, right now, the third button is set to trigger the soft knee switch on the compressor, which makes the compression smoother. But if you want to change this, then you can just select the compressor in the device list here, then select another parameter for button 3, like Adapt Release, which makes the release time of the compressor change with the signal, instead of being fixed at one value. Setting up your own insert effect is easy, and you don't need to go into any of the routing, as it's all done automatically for you. You just select the mixer track you want to process, then press F8 to show our devices, and then double click the one you want. So let's set up a phaser on our guitar part. The 
The only issue here is that, with no dry wet dial, it's difficult to control the amount of the effect. So having the effect as an insert isn't as suitable, and we need to make it a send effect instead. The send effects have their own section on the mixer, and these are already set up on reverbs and delays. For example, we've got a nice room reverb set up on send 2. So we just turn it on and crank up the dial to apply the reverb, which literally adds the process signal on top of the dry signal going through the track. To set up the phaser as a send effect, we just open up the context menu by control clicking on a track or right clicking on a PC and then selecting create send effects. This sets the effect up on the next available return track over here. So you can now edit the effect settings using the edit switch and then set however much of the effect you want on the track using the send switch and dial once again. So that's shown you how each channel strip on the mixer works, with regards to signal flow and routing, and hopefully helps you to understand a bit more about processing with EQ, dynamics and different effects. Next time, we're going to be looking at some arrangement techniques like automation, and showing how to put the finishing touches on your track. See you then. <laughs>